My name is Jan Willem van Prooijen. I'm an associate professor in psychology from Amsterdam and my area of specialization is conspiracy theories. Well, conspiracy theories always start with a very big and frightening event. Think of the 9-11 strikes or think of a disease epidemic. And people often want to make sense of that. They want to understand what happened, but they then typically tend to fill in the blanks themselves. They don't have the information and these blanks often involve, uh, uh, people tend to assume the worst. So people then tend to assume that uh, these bad events were intentionally caused by a group of bad people that operates in the shadows, that operates in secret. Uh, what has baffled me really uh, as a conspiracy theory as outlandish is are the flat earth and hollow earth conspiracy theories. Um, you know, uh, flat earth conspiracy theory, which is that scientists have been lying to us for 400 years and the earth actually isn't round but it's flat and then there's also the hollow earth theory assuming that the earth is in fact hollow and that uh, scientists also hide the evidence for that and there's a hole at the north pole where you can go in um, you know what has baffled me is that so many people uh, how many people believe that and how they shove away uh, centuries of scientific research what i also find fascinating is for instance the hollow earth conspiracy theory was actually a valid scientific theory about 200 years ago and it was also the basis of jules verne's novel journey to the center of the earth of course uh, but now yeah we really should know better to me it reflects a complete disregard of what we know for a fact from science you know there's some there's always something mysterious uh, about conspiracy theories um, many explanations uh, that involve conspiracy uh, about conspiracy theories say it's a response to fear it's a, a frightening situation i think there's also an element uh, another element to that it's also um, you know a conspiracy theory can also be a bit like an exciting novel or like a thriller or like a detective eh? a sort of a whodunit um, and i think that also sort of explains the appeal to them also among people who may not even believe in them because people who don't believe conspiracy theories also tend to find them fascinating or uh, like to read about them or like to hear about them so yeah i think that can explain uh, the draw of uh, these theories among such a wide audience some conspiracy theories you know uh, can be uh, you know relatively you know they, they do have they always have an impact let me put it that this way but i think some conspiracy theories that go widespread can have an actual impact and not always for the better. Um, what we believe drives our behavior. Uh, that belief may be true, it belief may be false, but what we believe drives what we do. Uh, and to give you an example, if a, a belief such as that vaccines cause autism and pharmaceutical industries conspire to hide the evidence for that, if that goes mainstream, and it has gone mainstream actually, this can have devastating effects. Uh, lots of parents who don't get their ch child vaccinated, and we now actually see uh, in various places uh, a renewed surge of illnesses that uh, you know are, are preventable uh, by simple vaccines. So um, you know, uh, sometimes conspiracy theories can go widespread, and that the consequences of that aren't always necessarily good. Thank you.